In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Arranger track in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So the new Arranger track in Cakewalk by BandLab promises to be a useful tool for arranging and testing different arrangements in your music in a non-destructive way. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going through a quick tutorial about how to use the tool, as well as talking about some of its pros and cons. So please do stick around for all of that. Now before we do get started, if you do like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. Now, let's get stuck into that Arranger track. So before we get started, you may want to make sure that you do have the latest version of Cakewalk so that you can see these new features. For reference, I'm using version 2020.04, build 179. Now, as ever, before you go ahead and update Cakewalk, do make sure that you back up your projects and all your data. I've actually lost projects before in the process of updating Cakewalk. It was a very painful experience. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, let alone my beloved viewers. So you have been warned. So what do we have here on the screen? We have a little project which I created late last night. I hesitate to call it a song or even a piece of music, but it is some sound at least. Um, it consists of some drums, bass and organ. They're all virtual instruments um, and they're playing an intro, a verse, a chorus and an outro. And you can see that I've got some markers at the top there indicating those. I like to use markers. You don't have to use them for this process, um, but I've used them for many, many years. Really great for helping you not to get too confused as your songs get more complex. Now, the arranger features are really handy at this stage, especially. At this stage, I've just got sort of um, the core of a song, some basic parts, and I'm perhaps not sure which order I want things to go in, whether I want it just to be a, uh, you know, uh, two verses and then a chorus, or maybe straight into the chorus and the verses come later. And I may want to experiment. Now, that could be quite difficult. Um, well, not difficult, but just messy. You, you know, you end up having to doing uh, lots, doing lots of cuts and paste of different sections of the song, and then you find you don't like it. You have to undo all your work. So, what BandLab have done here is tried to create a feature which makes it easy for you to experiment um, with some basic progressions, and that's what we're going to do here. Now, before we launch in, and I'll show you exactly how to use it, I'm going to play this piece of music to you. This is very brave of me. I'm ruining my reputation. Here. Uh, but this is just to give you some context. I want you just to listen out for what's happening here and so that things will make a bit more sense later. As I say, there's an intro, a verse, a chorus, and an outro. Let's have a listen to that now, and I may even do some dancing to get me through the pain. I know, I know, amazing, amazing. So hopefully that wasn't too painful for you. And I'm sorry that I wasted 27 seconds or so of your life, but hopefully you understand the basics of what's going on here and the things that I wanna move around into a different order. So in order to use the Arranger, there's a couple of new views that we haven't seen before in Cakewalk. And the first of them is the Arranger track. And we can see that by hitting A on the keyboard just like that. And there's the Arranger track. If you hit A again, it hides it. Another way to show and hide it is to go up to the View menu up here and then navigate down in that menu and click that to show and hide it again. Now, the other view which is gonna be important to us is the Arranger view itself. We can get to that with this new icon up here that says A on it. We'll click on that and that shows it there. We can also show and hide it by clicking on Shift, Alt and I all together and that can show and hide it. I'm gonna hide it for a moment so that I can show you another way to show it a little bit later on. So the first thing that we're gonna do is sort of map out the different sections of our song, and it's really easy. If I wanna just map out the first verse, I'll just drag a box out like so, 
release and it creates a section now you'll notice that it's called section 42 um they're not always called section 42 only if you've done it 41 times already which i have in this project while I whilst i was experimenting off camera yours will probably to say section one now we've got that section created let's create the chorus section i'm actually going to drag over from this side and drag a section out now you'll notice as i get up against it there it just won't go any further i can't overlap sections and that's a good thing you wouldn't want sections to actually overlap it would be very confusing for this whole process however if you do feel like you've made a mistake of some kind you can do an overlap or create a new join by hitting alt on the keyboard okay and you'll notice that can overlap there okay so there we have a different section and if we wanted to change a section you can see that we if we just get to the edge of it um, we can move things around like so and i'll do that there i've got those two sections there that's my verse and my chorus i'll drag out the intro while i'm there and then just move this out of the way i'll drag sorry that was the outro and this is the intro and there i have my sections and if i wanted to name them i could just go over uh, here to this part here where we're showing them in fact that did appear without me showing you something i'll just show you this so i'll hide it so another way to actually show these sections is something I did there, which I didn't tell you about. I double clicked on one of these sections and that opens up that panel there. So yeah, if I wanted to rename it, I can double click on the name and I would call that, of course, intro like so. Now, um, you can do all of it that way and that's probably a way that you may do it if you don't have markers. However, if you're like me and you already had markers in your project, there's actually a really simple way of doing it and we do this by clicking control uh, let me think control a on the keyboard for all of course and then we go up to the ruler up the top right click and we go down to create sections from markers and if we do that it creates the sections based upon where i had the markers and it names the sections as well so that's really cool if you do happen to have markers and i'll go in and i'm just going to call this uh, one here which is verse one it's not really verse one it's just going to be a verse section so i'll just go in and rename that verse okay so i've got my sort of generic sections there so the idea here is we want to be able to experiment with different orders now there's a couple of different ways we can do that you'll notice down the bottom here we have the arranger window let me just actually zoom in so you can see all this a little bit clearer so there's the arranger window or panel down the bottom there and I'm going to just click on this button, this sort of down arrow button. That's just moving all of the sections down into the arranger window. Now I can duplicate some of them. If I wanted to have two verses there, I could go to this menu and click duplicate. And that's fine. We've, we can go ahead and do things like that. We can delete sections, etc. Or the other way that we can do it is just drag sections from the top to the bottom using it kind of like a palette. So, so I think, you know what, this is gonna be the radio ed, you know, edit. I don't want any intro, just launch straight into the first verse. So I'll put the first verse there. And in fact, you know what, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm going to, sorry, I'll go in there and remove that. I'll actually start off with a chorus to begin with. So I'll drag my chorus down to there, so go straight in, and then it's gonna to go to a verse. And then it'll go to another chorus, and then it'll go to an outro. We won't even use that intro for this radio edit. Now, um, I can rename that here. We'll call it radio. Well, I'll just call it radio. It's fine. And then uh, we can play it just to see how it sounds. So I'll just click on the play button here, and you'll see, obviously, even if we move the playhead right back to the beginning there, if we play this, it's going to start off with the chorus. <laughs> Now, if you haven't guessed already, when it gets to the end of this chorus, where do you think it's going to go? No prizes. <laughs> Just guess for fun. It's going to go to verse. Okay, so you can see what's going to happen. Essentially what this feature does is it controls the playhead. It just is a way of navigating it while it continues to play to different sections. So that's really, uh, really, really cool. Now, you may think, well, I don't mind that version, but how about I have another version? So I'm going to go here and create a new arrangement here. We've still got that one that we uh, created earlier. And I'm going to have this for the album version. The album version is going to have an intro, a verse, a verse, a chorus, 
another verse, and then the outro. Okay, that's cool. We'll call that album version. And of course, we can go ahead and play that. And it's gone ahead and done that as I suggested. I want to go back to my radio version, then that's already down there, the radio version. So you can go ahead and make as many versions as you like. Well, I say that, I'm not really sure about that. I'm, to, my understanding is that you could make as many as you like, lots. So once you've done that, that's really cool. You can start to play around with those and experiment with it, and you're not having to do any editing here. Now, one thing I just love about this feature right away is I actually really like it as a navigation feature. I, I could stop using markers and start using this, this feature. I love the, the boldness of it. Uh, by the way, you can change those colors if you want. You can just go in there and select a different color for a section. But yeah, if I just want to go, oh, I want to navigate to the first verse, I could just click on it there and the playhead goes there. If I want to say, so I just want to go to the chorus, I could click on it there and so on and so forth. So I think that's a really nice way to navigate. I kind of like that. Now, what if I'm not sure I want to perhaps play some of these in my car or want to send them to a friend or, or what have you? You can actually go ahead and export these. Um, let's go export as audio. And this pulls up your usual export window. But you can see here in the bottom left-hand corner that you can select um, different arrangements. You can select all of them. You can go ahead and create your you know, your file name and click export and it'll append those um, names there to different files and you'll have them all as WAV or MP3s, however you export them. So that's really, really cool. Um, that's going to give you some different versions to listen to away from your cakewalk environment. Now, if you feel at some stage, this is the version that I want to live with. I love this, you know, Alba version. This is the one I'm going to stick with. Then you can go ahead and then commit that over here. So I'll just click on this commit button here and watch over on the main window. Um, it'll ask me to confirm and I do that and bang, it does all the work for me over in Cakewalk. So, so I'll just zoom out again so you can see all that it's done there. It's basically created the whole basis of my song for me. So very, very cool, and I'll just undo that by the way. Very, very cool um, feature. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I think um, are some slight shortcomings with it. And to be honest, I don't mean to be critical. This is the first version of this feature, a very, very handy tool. Well, there was a criticism I was gonna have and I was proven wrong in my experimentation because I thought to myself, what if I hadn't quantized everything here? Because I should explain I had quantized everything here. So let's say, look at this bass guitar. Um, let's go to the beginning. In fact, no, let's just go to the beginning of this chorus here. Here are these uh, beats at the beginning. And let's say I hadn't quantized it. Let's say it had been played, you know, um, and kept very humanoid, so I don't want to quantize that. And you may get a note like this, wouldn't you, which was slightly before the beat, before the beat, which is here, yeah? And you would think to yourself, oh, the problem is, is that when it goes to the beginning of that marker, it's not going to play that note, is it? Because that note happens before that time. But in actual fact, I was proved wrong by this. Um, if I just go to the chorus there and I play it, you heard that bass note there. So um, I think this has always been the case in Cakewalk, but I just haven't noticed it before. It works as long as, it doesn't matter if that note starts before the beginning of that beat, as long as it does overlap that beat. So if the note is completely outside of that time, of course, it's not gonna play it. Yeah, if I play the chorus now, it doesn't have that note there. But as long as some part of that note is overlapping that little beat there, yeah it plays it and that's fine. So that was something I was expecting to be a problem, but it wasn't. Now, the only thing I think, this is not a problem, but I did experiment with this on an actual song, a kind of a complete song. And you do get some slight issues because of the nature of music. Um, so you've got some vocals in there and um, it's all very well if say those vocals start within a bar. So the vocal either starts right at the beginning of the bar or sometime after that bar starts. But sometimes you'll get some lead-in phrases which lead into, say, a chorus. It might be a couple of beats before the beginning of the bar. So, of course, when you've got a vocal there and you start chopping up these sections like this, that doesn't quite make sense. So if I was going to suggest anything um, for the future, 
um, of this feature, then I would suggest that you could have a kind of a, a pre-roll on selected instruments so that you could create your section, but an interface somewhere you could say, hey, for that vocal track, I want a one beat pre-roll on that. Something along those lines. That would be really, really cool if you could do that. And that sort of reminds me of another feature that I would hope they're going to put in the future. And that is to have the ability to create a section like this chorus here um, and be able to say, well, over in here, when I put this chorus here, some menu where I could deselect some of these tracks. Now, unless I've missed something here, I don't think there's anything where you could do that. In other words, I may want to have, say, verse one, which is just bass and drums. And then I want verse two to have bass, drums and organ so that, so that I don't have to you know, create two versions of that verse with and without particular instruments. I think it would be nice if they provided a way to include and exclude certain tracks from this specific instance of, you know, the verse or chorus or what have you that you put down in that arrangement. So I think that would be handy. And that does remind me of just one thing I forgot to mention earlier. You do want to be careful of this. When you select something like a section, do take note, if you see, that it does actually select all of the content down below. Now I got um, unstuck by this earlier because I was trying to delete a section. I thought, oh, I'll just select this chorus and I'll delete it. I don't want that section. And when I click delete, of course, it deleted all the content below, which was actually the notes in the music. So um, the way I found around that was to click it twice. The second time you click it, and it's just, um, just clicking that section there. And then I can just get rid of the chorus and the chorus uh, section doesn't exist anymore. So I think that's it for this sort of little introduction. I've only been using this a little bit for the last few days myself, but I do hope that that's helpful to you. Um, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the feature. Let me know if you've given it a go. Let me know if you're going to use it, if you're going to make use of it, and um, whether there's any uh, ideas that you've got that perhaps if we're lucky Band Lab might read some of our comments and uh, take note. You never know. We can live and dream. So I do hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please do ask in the comments down below. Or you can head over to the Creative Source forums and ask there. There's a link for that down in the description. Now, if you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button. That's helpful to me because it lets YouTube know that other people should watch this video. If you didn't like this video, make sure you hit the dislike button twice. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.